the chair of the of the uh, Youth Education and Cultural Affairs. Uh, my co-chair is Dorothea Thompson Manning. Um, Teo will post the protocols. I'm sure everybody has been aware of the protocols uh, on the Zoom and Teo can get that to us. So now I would like to do um, a roll call and introduction. So uh, Dorothea, if you can start and introduce yourself and then kind of give it to someone else to uh, introduce themselves. I am Dorothea Thompson Manning. I'm the um, co chair of uh, youth education and cultural affairs. And I've just been recently appointed to work with um, the borough board. Uh, I can pass it on to, I'm just looking at names here, Kat. Well, the, the, the committee members first, I, don't I think. See, I don't see Madison that Chang is. is one of our newer community oh, members, okay. uh, board members. So yeah, I'm Madison. Okay, yeah. go ahead, because I don't see anyone else. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, hi, I'm Madison. Um, I'm a community board member and also on the Youth Education and Cultural Affairs Committee. Welcome, okay. And I see that everyone, and Sam. Sam, can you introduce yourself? Sam Johnson. She's the person at the 347 number. Okay, I don't hear her. So um, I see that there are representatives from the library, the press, the community, and the community. So uh, welcome. So uh, the agenda is posted. It's a typical agenda. We we will change it so that we can have presentations and then later have anything that requires a vote, which would be the minutes uh, for approval. Uh, so I'd like to change the agenda if nobody objects and ask that the Brooklyn Public Library friends uh, present uh, to us about their new and exciting developments. So we have Michael Fianni and uh, Kat Savage uh, from the Brooklyn Public Library. So um, all yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having us here today. Um, uh, I'm Mike Fianni. I'm a director of community engagement at Brooklyn Public Library. Um, and uh, I'll let uh, Kat introduce herself while I share my screen. Thanks, Mike. It's good to see everyone this evening. Uh, my name is Kat Savage. I'm the uh, Neighborhood Library Supervisor uh, of the Adam Street Library, which just opened two weeks ago. Um, so I'm the managing librarian there. So if you ever have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Okay. Great. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. yes. Great. Um, yeah, so um, uh, Thank you again for uh, for having us today. And we wanna talk about, like you said, two really, really big initiatives that the library had, um, our fine free and our brand new Adam Street Library. Um, so um, yeah, I'll, Kat, I'll turn it back over to you. Excellent, thanks, Mike. Um, so I'm, I'm so happy. Um, this little book sort of shows how happy I am about this development. Um, but you have to multiply the happiness that this book is showing off by 10 million because I'm so glad that um, Brooklyn Public Library, along with New York Public and Queens Public Libraries, um, has gone fine free, um, which means if you're a day or two late returning a book, no problem. Um, it's uh, There's not a punitive fine, um, which means there's not a barrier um, to, to folks who may uh, be unable to pay late fees, um, because that's a very real issue. We're serving, uh, you know, varied, varied communities. And 
it, it, I've seen it happen where people stop using the library anecdotally. Um, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more why as we go through this presentation, why it's so important that we're fine free. But I can say from, from my perspective, um, after years of being uh, a librarian, a children's librarian, uh, this is momentous. This is huge. And I can see us um, welcoming more and more people and welcoming back uh, people who may no longer visit the library because of um, it being, um, you know, not so welcoming when we're assessing uh, punitive fines um, that really can add up. So what we did, uh, we cleared all the late fines that may have previously accrued. Um, so if uh, folks had a balance of books that they had returned, um, but had uh, multiple, you know, anywhere from 15 cents to, you know, several dollars, uh, that was cleared as a courtesy um, across the system. So you don't have to ask, um, everything is just gone. Uh, we call it a, a blank, blank slate. Um, and going forward, we're not going to charge that daily late fine. So previously it was 15 cents a day. Uh, that's no longer the case. So if you return it early, if you turn it on time, if you return it late, um, you won't see any, any fines um, accrued uh, for for day to day fines. That's not to say we don't want our materials back because we are, I always tell the kids that get library cards. This is a shared resource. We are sharing with all the people in our neighborhood, all the people in Brooklyn. Um, and it's uh, our responsibility as citizens to return the books when we're done with them. So uh, we are still issuing uh, due dates. We are still reminding folks to return their items in a timely fashion or renew them. Um, and the items can become overdue. So what happens? Um, over the course of uh, four weeks, we'll send uh, reminders, but after four weeks, the items become long overdue or billed. And that means the cost of the book is gonna show up on uh, the account. Uh, this can be sort of surprising. I've had a lot of people say, oh my gosh, I have $24.99 on my account. Um, what, what's going on with this? And it's very simple. You return the item that amount comes off your uh, card in full um, and you sort of have, you know, that incentive to return it um, and sort of highlights the importance of, of returning materials. So that's the way, a little bit of a technical way that works. So why go fine free? Um, this is something that the libraries have been looking at for a really long time. Uh, we are not the first library to go fine free. Uh, we looked to previous examples in San Francisco, Chicago, Baltimore. And the studies out of these um, pioneering library systems is that uh, fear of late fines can really discourage people from ever checking things out, from getting a library card in the first place, from disusing their library card and neglecting um, this resource in their neighborhood. And we haven't really found much evidence. Um, I've had folks tell me in, in recent uh, days, like no one's ever gonna return the books. They're just gonna hold on to the books forever. That's not the case. We have really found that um, the having no fines that actually lowers overdue rates. We see things out less, things are coming back. And in addition, fines have a negative effect overall. So unwilling or unable to pay fines, patrons do not return their late items and don't come back to the library at all. So they're not coming back, we're losing people. So I mentioned all those other library systems that have uh, done this uh, ahead of us, as, um, but we've actually been doing a modified form as part of our My Library NYC program. And this is a program that schools can enroll into and uh, in effect receive the same fine free benefits that are now extended to uh, everyone with a Brooklyn Public, New York Public or Queens Public Library card. Um, they don't get charged late fines. Um, and how that worked is you just have to return the book 
Um, if you have an overdue book, we're gonna say, hey, bring back that dog man book so you can borrow this Captain Underpants book. That's the way it goes. Um, and we found that we see a lot of circulation in that program that we've been running for nine years. And we haven't seen um, items being lost. We haven't seen items being um, extensively overdue. Um, so we, we, we know for a fact that New York can, can do this. So that sort of wraps it up. Um, I think after this whole presentation, um, Mike and I can answer questions, uh, but I will say that I'm so happy that Brooklyn Public Library is fine free forever. Um, so it's a really great thing. I hope that, you know, you all agree, <laughs> of course, and I hope that you come by and um, borrow books and not have to worry too much about punitive little fines. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, and, I, and you know, if there's anyone in your lives who maybe have stopped using the library because of past fines, there, there's no fines on their cards now. They're, they're all gone. So if you have anyone who's, um, uh, who you talk to who says, uh, I don't use library because of fines, there, there's no more fines on their cards. Um, and so now we want to talk to you about something else that's momentous. Um, our first new location in almost 40 years. Um, the last new Brooklyn Public Library was about 40 years ago. Um, in Dittmas Park on Cortellu Road. Um, and that was um, uh, 1983, I believe. So this is, um, yeah, 40 years later, uh, we're excited to share with you Adam Street Library, um, which um, I don't know if you saw the first slide, but, um, but it's visible from uh, the FDR in Manhattan. We're very proud of this little, this library. Um, and just before Kat uh, takes us, walks us through the building, um, just wanna say how we got here. Um, this library was um, a result of, uh, of extensive community engagement. Um, your committee uh, uh, helped us um, both by meeting with us and sharing feedback and also um, you and CB2 as a whole told us who we should be talking to in the neighborhood. Um, so we had 37 one-on-one -on -one meetings, multiple focus groups. We tabled at events. We presented at, at larger meetings. We invited people um, to a gathering at the Made in NYC building um, in Dumbo to see uh, designs, uh, draft designs. And we also conducted surveys online and uh, in person. So um, I think that all this community feedback really produced uh, a beautiful, beautiful building, um, which I know some of you have seen, but um, the cat's gonna walk you through, um, through what it looks like. Yeah, thank you, Mike. So this is uh, the Adam Street Library as of, I believe, May 2019. So you, if you've been in the building, you know we've come a long way from this state. Uh, it was a very raw space. And um, after our community engagement, um, we worked with Architects Works a Work AC and uh, design and build company Shamit uh, to create something uh, completely different from what you're seeing here. Uh, and here we are. Yeah, it's it doesn't even look like the same space, but I assure you it is. And uh, we're looking at the uh, information desk uh, where we have a, our initial welcoming service point. Uh, you can kind of glimpse the return slots way in the back in the mural of, uh, you know, local flowers. Um, you can also see on the left there a glimpse into our children's room, which uh, again, I'm a children's librarian, so I'm so excited about this unique space. So the children's room, uh, we're sort of peeking in again here, is an elevated space sort of separated from the main um, floor. Uh, what I really love about the design here is that the recess that you can see on the right-hand side is actually stroller parking. So folks can park their stroller, uh, walk up the ramp or the stairs, and have a enjoyable, uncluttered uh, experience to read and share with, uh, with their children in their lives. Let's have another look. The other way, <laughs> back in time. There we go. <laughs> so this is once you're actually in the children's area, you'll see that's very welcoming. There's an amphitheater there that will uh, eventually be used for story times and uh, library instruction. Um, I'm really excited that we also have a service point in the children's room. So there will be a librarian or a staff member there uh, to help out parents and caregivers and children uh, to help them find the books that they want and need. 
And after they found those books, they can actually check them out using our self-service kiosk that can, you can see on the right there. Um, and that way they don't have to go all the way back around to the service point, unless of course they want to. And here is a, a view out of the children's room overlooking the adult reading room. And the really amazing thing about this uh, particular cutout is that the architects have uh, designed a way for uh, people in the children's room to feel connected with the outdoors. Um, the windows and the connection with the Brooklyn Bridge Park, the, uh, the river, the Manhattan Bridge um, is really special um, about this location and everyone can sort of get that clear view uh, of that. And sometimes we see some interesting weather over the water too, as we saw recently. <laughs> And so we also have our um, adult reading room. We have three large work tables like this one that you see. Um, I will say that uh, you're not seeing any connections here, but we are going to have completely wired work tables so folks can bring their own devices and uh, plug into a power source, uh, charging source. Uh, I will say that we opened this location um, and we are working with some rented furniture. Um, so the reason why you're not seeing that material here uh, is because we're still waiting. You may have heard some information about supply chain issues. It's affecting everything, including uh, the design and build industry um, as we wait for those materials. Um, in the meantime, uh, it, you're not able to see this, but we have set up sort of an ad hoc um, power station for these work co-working spaces. And our adult nonfiction section, uh, you're also able to see here part of it. Other things that don't really photograph so well, uh, the building is fully ADA accessible. Um, it's reachable from the street via ramp. Uh, the children's room is reachable by ramp. Um, we have a teen area that has a curtain that can be opened and closed and that curtain has sound dampening properties. So if we have a, a after school study program or homework help program, uh, if anyone has teenagers in their lives, they know that even you know learning can be loud uh, at that age. So that's just a way to um, help with that um, uh, shared space. Uh, we have two meeting rooms. Um, right now we're not able to book them, but eventually when we're able to do so safely, uh, one will be able to be booked with a library card. Um, so you don't even have to ask anyone, you just book it on our website and you're able to use a small meeting room. Uh, we have a larger meeting room that's also our uh, multi-purpose room that uh, is very modular. Um, that's not really set up quite yet as well. However, that can be booked by community board two, by this committee, um, anyone, uh, you just need to speak with the uh, branch manager and that's me. So, you know, you know me now and you can always reach out to me once we're ready to begin offering uh, meeting room bookings. Uh, we have computer access. Uh, we have uh, uh, computers for virtually all ages. Um, we have a three and up, three to eight computer that children can use uh, only educational games with. It's a pre-programmed device. Um, and then we have uh, desktop computers for children, um, basically eight to 12. Uh, we have a bank of teen computers that specifically for um, 13 to 17 year old individuals. And we have laptops that uh, folks can borrow as well if they happen to be um, you know, uh, uh, over 17. Um, there's free Wi-Fi throughout the building. So again, we're seeing a lot of people bringing in their own devices and they can connect to our wireless network, which is um, BPL Unwired. Uh, I already spoke about the wired computer tables and we have four gender neutral public restrooms, two of which are ADA accessible and have uh, changing tables in them as well. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, so yeah, that we just thank you for having us today to, to talk about um, Adam Street and Find Free. Um, and I, you know, I thank you for all your support too with Adam Street. I know the design came before the board at least twice, maybe a maybe a part of it came a third time. So, um, um, so Jan, just thank you for all of your um, uh, guidance throughout this process too. And we're Kat and I are happy to answer any questions about Adam Street or any uh, and uh, Find Free or um, any other uh, library issues in the district. Are there any questions or comments? Oh, this is Dorothea. Um, I have a few questions. Um, first of all, I wanna ask about um, 
the fine free. Um, would you happen to know how much money was actually owed uh, the Brooklyn Library before there was a decision to not collect fines? Um, I don't have that figure. Kat, do you have that figure on you? Uh, no, I, I would take a couple minutes to pull it up. So we can no. get we can get you that number. Uh, the other thing I'd like to ask about uh, the larger meeting room and um, who can book that room and how many people can it hold? Um, so that book, that room can be booked by any member of the public. Uh, we have a meeting room reservation form. Uh, it's available on the Brooklyn Public Library website and it actually works for all branches with um, larger meeting rooms. Um, the capacity, I would have to get back to you on that. I know the small meeting room is eight people. I believe the large meeting room is 30 people, but that is uh, pre-COVID numbers. Um, so I'm not sure what it would be once we're able to offer it, if we are offering it during COVID times. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any questions or comments further? Um, I, I was invited to the uh, opening. It was awesome. Uh, I guess I'm curious as to specific outreach to the schools that are closest. Yeah, thanks, Betty. That's a great question. Um, so I have a, a good relationship with PS 307. Um, I am going to actually head over, I think it's tomorrow is their fall festival. Um, so I'm heading over tomorrow for a few hours to spread the good word about the library. I'm also in touch with the parent coordinator there who's starting a series of uh, parent workshops. Uh, and uh, the his December theme is uh, making your child a super reader. Um, so I'm on track to speak at that meeting um, in December. Um, we also do, uh, you know, general, you know, informing uh, people about our at PS 307 about that. Uh, 287, I have a great relationship with the parent coordinator, coordinator there, Miss Evans. Um, I visited, uh, you know, it's so wonderful how schools always have these community events. Um, so I can come out and be a face uh, for the library. So it's not just this giant building with the word library on the side. It's filled with people that want to help, um, want to help out kids and families and uh, getting the word out. So that's a, such a great question. Um, and Dock Street, um, we're, we're in touch with as well. Uh, what about high schools? High schools, um, you know, uh, if you have any uh, ways that you can connect us a little bit closer, we're, we've been working largely with the elementary school crowd, uh, mostly because um, that uh, we haven't really had the YA specialty, the teen specialist. Uh, we have just brought somebody on board whose uh, sole focus is uh, teens, so the high schools. Uh, so we're really looking to um, focus our, uh, our work there. Uh, I was just introduced today actually to um, the STEAM school in the Navy Yard. Um, so we're going to definitely pursue that connection. Cool. Uh, what, I know that Benjamin Banneker, is I'm not saying it's right close, but it's in the area. Mm -hmm. Geography might be a little uh, off, but that's a school where students live throughout Brooklyn. But I would say a substantial amount live in the area closer to um, the library. So that could be a a venue. Uh, Benjamin Banneker. It's on Clinton Avenue. Uh, near uh, the BQE. So is that Park or Flushing? I forget, but. Yeah, BQE, we're so close. That's yeah. a great feed. Thank you, Betty. We'll follow up. Sure. Any other questions or comments for our library friends? Hearing none, um, please continue to participate in our meetings and bring us news and uh, uh, for the general meeting, as, as well as us, I mean, we're very interested in hearing about the uh, Brooklyn Heights Library and when that's going to come online. And we're also interested, over the years, we've heard some chatter about the cultural library and the BAM cultural area. 
And when I've asked for updates, it's always been vague. I don't mean from the library, but just in general about that whole cultural space. So any type of updates you can give us about that in the future would be uh, welcome. Uh, the performing, I think it was going to be performing arts or visual arts, some type of art library. Um, yeah, for Brooklyn Heights, I can tell you that we're looking to, there's been some construction delays, as, mm -hmm. I, as I think you all know, but the, um, we're looking to open um, uh, early next year. So hopefully January, February, March. Um, uh, and, you know, in the meantime, we're going to continue to provide library services out of um, the Center for Brooklyn History on Pierpont. Um, but I cannot wait to, to bring people into the Brooklyn Heights Library. It's um, you know, Adam Street Library is gorgeous. Uh, it's one of our um, smaller libraries. Uh, Brooklyn Heights is, um, it's just absolutely, it's incredible the amount of, of services and resources that are gonna be there for the community. Um, and the, that, um, that cultural space, uh, you know, I, I believe they're looking at opening next year or early the year after, but I, I don't have that information. Um, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, it's, it's like a, a, a whole a whole set of people um a whole set of organizations participating um but yeah I, but uh but for brooklyn heights we're looking at um uh, early next year thank you we look forward to uh hearing more okay so uh in the absence of any further comments or discussions i would like to uh move this discussion feel free to stay or go if you have to eat in oh taya Taya is saying something. Are you saying something, Taya? No. Just a big thank you. Okay. Great. Likewise. Thank you both. Thank okay. you. All. Thank you. Okay. So, in terms of the chairperson's report, I want to thank everyone for participating in the statement of district needs. Um, for those who've who've read all sixty some items, they were all across the different interest levels. They were all across the different, uh, affecting different parts of our district. Uh, they were very thoughtful. It was hard to rank things as high, medium, or low priority because everything is important. Uh, so if you haven't uh, 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 completed the survey, I, I believe it's called a survey, it's important to because I think out of all of that, not only are we prioritizing, but we are, we're asked for what are the three most important uh, concerns in our community. And I think if you talk to people, they say transportation, density, traffic, affordable housing, the BQA can't deliver, but that, that's anecdotal. So people need to uh, answer the survey so that the district staff can write a brilliant report and send it on, right? <laughs> yes. So thank you for that. Um, our longtime committee members know that traditionally we didn't meet in November and December because of the dates uh, right on Thanksgiving and Christmas. This year, we seem to be scheduled for November 16th, so we can have a November meeting. Uh, and I am not sure about a December meeting. So I'd like to hear from members of the committee. Um, do you think we need a December meeting? Um, what are your thoughts on a December meeting? Anyone? No, okay. So uh, I don't think we've had a robust agenda this year so far. So. I'm thinking I would like to recommend that we uh, follow our previous precedent and not have a December meeting, but I think the office will let us know if something comes up that merit that we need to uh, need and have an action agenda. How does that sound to you? Okay, good. Uh, so I wanna share that uh, District 13 is having anti-racist town hall meetings throughout the year. So it isn't gonna be just, okay, there's one meeting, we're anti-racist, this is what we're doing. But it's really a series of, of developed workshops, 
been given by um, different consultants aligned and with the support of district staff and parents. And I believe, Taya, do you have the dates? And people can write to CEC 13 at what schools.nyc.gov to get on the list um, so that you can get the Zoom link. I've been to a few of them and they're thoughtful. Um, and people get a chance to express their concerns, their hopes and their dreams. Okay, so it says, CEC 13 at schools.nyc.gov. So that way you can get uh, a mailing and a link. Uh, and this is, isn't the district presenting it, it's in full collaboration with the parent leadership as well. Uh, so I recommend it and think it's worthwhile. Okay. Um, thank you, Taya. And I also wanted to note that in our future meetings, of course, we're inviting um, Superintendent uh, Samuels to, to give us an update. I have learned based on our previous meeting about asthma and asthma initiatives that the lead person in the asthma initiative has retired and there was no um, replacement given at the time. So I'm asking that we even though as a committee and in working with Hess, we wanted to meet with them early on in the school year. With the lead person gone, uh, I, I think we should wait a bit on that. And I've also learned that there's a severe nursing shortage as we can expect. I mean, because of COVID in general, nurses are burnt out and there are so many other jobs for nurses other than being school nurses other jobs that maybe pay more or uh, for whatever reason, there are lots of openings for school nurses. So the students most likely will not be getting the asthma uh, education that uh, they had in the past and that we had hoped to strengthen. Uh, and lastly, in my report, um, Future meetings, we had always talked about, we need to hear from the cultural organizations because we are youth education and cultural affairs. And the cult, I know Taya has done a wonderful job reaching out and they don't seem to be interested in, I don't know, coming to meetings or um, presenting. So maybe in future meetings, we can talk about how we can connect more uh, with the culturals. Um, and I'm also very interested in following up with the Cornerstone programs because those are programs that we can maybe advocate for more in a future statement of needs because they are uh, funded and managed through a city agency uh, and they do serve the young people that are the most in need in our district. So. Uh, Taya, is there any word of when we're going to be going back to in-person meetings and then we could maybe visit sites the way we used to? So the current executive order that lifts the restriction on remote meetings um, is goes through mid-January. Um, I will just share that there is significant uh, movement, interest, action, letters of support being drafted by various of the 59 community boards, um, appealing to Governor Hochul to um, either continue to extend that executive order or perhaps permanently lift that requirement. Um, there has been widespread reportage that the remote meetings has significantly, and, and that, that's true for our board as well, mm -hmm. significantly increased public attendance uh, and accessibility for folks that have mobility issues. Um, and I would add a third category, which is parents who are insanely busy at 6 p.m. on a weekday. Um, so for now, uh, we're remote for sure until mid-January, and I'm sure we will start hearing around mid-end of December if there's any extension. Thank you, yeah. So if at some point we are able 
as a committee to visit some of the cornerstone uh, programs in the NYCHA. I know a few years ago, we visited the one at Atlantic Terminal. Uh, so I, I think that that could be uh, an area of, of interest. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, the dates. I think in the past I mentioned that the executive board or the, is it the full board that is going to consider changing the dates uh, for the calendar meetings or is it the executive? Is the full board? Yes, apparently it's the full board. Okay, so that the full board <coughs> will be voting in a month or two about changing the, the kind of permanent dates of our meetings so that they're better aligned with deadlines of when reports need to be sent to um, like landmarks and the liquor authorities and so on. Uh, Tay is showing us the proposed new schedule which would have us meeting the second Thursday of the month. So the, the beauty of this, um, idea is that it starts, the month starts with the executive committee, then all of your committees meet and have content, and then they're brought to the general uh, for votes and so on and, and discussion. So it, it looks, it looks more aligned with the work that we have to do. So we're thinking maybe if we vote on this, this would start in the beginning of the new year. That's what we're thinking. Okay, and then for the last item, uh, uh, under community uh, business, perhaps, um, I'm gonna ask Taya for a brief update on the Youth Council. One second, I just had it pulled up and had to move it for Show that, that slide, one second. Okay, so as okay, here we go. I'll start talking while I'm pulling up this document. Um so as the committee recommended to the full board, the Youth Council has been approved starting the, pro uh, the pro program and commence in January. Um, so since that vote was taken by the general board meeting, um, I have been uh, reaching out to, well, first we determined that there are 29 schools in the district boundaries that um, have for, there are 29 upper 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 class and post-secondary schools because the program is limited to 16 plus. Um, 29 schools, including one actually, which is a, a Montessori school in Dumbo, which doesn't have upper school kids yet, but they're expecting them, they're expanding their program to upper school uh, fall of 2022, so soon. Um, I have reached out to all 28 active schools um, by phone and email. They are all planning different methods of distributing the information to their students. Um, social media uh, assets have been created and will be distributed to them all. Um, I'm sorry to say that we've decided to focus on Instagram because this board does not have a TikTok account and students are not on Facebook. Madison is smiling, good. <laughs> um, just a quick reminder of parameters. Can I share a screen, please? Okay, so just a reminder that the easiest way to define the Youth Council is that it is a third category of board membership. So currently we have full board members who are elected, or I'm sorry, nom appointed by elected officials they serve two-year terms and they vote on both the full board and committee items. The second category of membership is public members, uh, which are appointed, confirmed, appointed, nominated by the committees, confirmed by the board chair. They also serve two-year terms, but there's no term limit and they vote only on committee items. And the youth council is this new third category of member 
um, things in common. They must also be a New York City resident. Specifically, they must be enrolled in a school in community district two. That is their significant interest. They must be 16 plus, which is aligned with the public member minimum age. Um, sorry, for background noise. Uh, their application and confirmation is handled by the office. They're confirmed by this committee and their term is six months. They attend Yucca committees, board general board meetings and one other meeting of their choice and they do not vote. And there are the general parameters. And the part that we think is particularly exciting is that in lieu of voting, um, they're invited to do a capstone presentation, which is not as serious as that sounds. It would be a five minute presentation at the end of their sixth month of service. Um, and it's an opportunity for them after having, you know, attended at least eight meetings to author and advocate for one request that will be included in the board vote for the annual statement of district needs and budget request. So even though they won't be voting on committee items, uh, they will still be able to have an impact on a measurable, measurable impact on the district by being able to promote something to be included in the annual um, district needs statement. Um, several of the schools are interested in structure having or allowing their students to structure the experience for school credit and happily all of the schools already have guidelines and permissions and you know it's it's a pretty it's a pretty simple form that the office will fill out on their behalf and it's just uh, most of the forms are simply an acknowledgement that they fulfilled x number of hours supervised by x responsible adults etc so that is the update and by your November meeting, actually, uh, Chair Fivebush, that is possibly a good reason to uh, maintain that December meeting. That is why I was thinking of this. Let me just show you this really quick. So, I'm gonna share a screen on a different view. So currently, uh, your, can you all see this? Mm -hmm. So your November meeting has been bumped up one week so that you avoid the holiday weekend or the holiday week altogether. The deadline for the applications for the Youth Council is Monday, November 15th. And that day I'll be emailing you um, one sheet summary of all of the applicants that we have because that will be a topic for discussion and vote at your November Yucca meeting. And Betty, you will be the first committee that is not the FMP committee, I believe, that will <laughs> need to do that in an executive session. So that simply means that after the public portion of the meeting has concluded, um, we will stop recording, invite any members of the public to leave, and then you will discuss the applications in executive session so that it's confidential. The, actually, maybe this doesn't change your schedule because then we have a month to issue invitations to the students that have been accepted by the committee. And the invitations are supposed to be out by the end of December. So you might wanna hold on to that December 22nd date just in case there's anything remaining, um, any remaining administrative tasks. I don't think there will be, but that's something to be mindful of because then assuming that the new schedule starts in January, their first meeting, they would be joining us on January 13th, which is very exciting. That's it. That's the update. We're super excited. Um, I, I am personally very excited to have a whole bunch of folks that are, um, and you know, let's see, it's, it's a pilot year, so we have no idea how many students will apply or be accepted by the committee, um, but anything would be an improvement from what we have now because we are currently allowed to have two youth members and we only have one. So we want to see all the seats. Well, I want to thank you for all your work and initiative um, in starting this. I just have one question and uh, maybe some of the others have a question, but has have any schools reached out to you after the initial contact and asked you like more questions? Like I have a student is interested, but they live yes. in another borough or this, you know, all the little details. Yes, uh, we've been fielding lots of questions at the office. That's how I know. Um, that's uh, Several of them asked for social media assets. So we'll be rolling those out this week. 
And that's also how we know, um, I, I think I've already gotten, I think five different versions of the form that the office will have to fill out to ensure that they get uh, credit for their activity. So, yeah. oh, so the forms are like from their school, like the XYZ right. high school That's right. form to sign off on the student activity, got That's it. Right. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, Thea, Sam, do you have any questions for Taya? August, 2021 and September, 2021, subject to the oral amendment the that the treasurer has made. That is adding that the plaques are for the mailing from the L. What was that? Okay. Um, I had a question. I don't know if I missed something, but um, is there an application? Like, did we already like look over like the application being sent to people? Taya? The, is there like an application that um, people- I'm sorry, I was muted. Yes, Madison. Thank you for asking that question. Um, please write this down and share it, uh, www.tiny.cc slash bk02youth. Um, it is aligned with all of our other tiny URL branding. <laughs> so now they have their own. Yes, and that, that's the link. If you, uh, I can open that for you actually. Let me show you what the application looks like. One second. Uh, here. Okay, so there's the URL. K02 youth. And then that takes you to a Google form. Oh, I've already responded. So let me see. I would have to open this in an incognito. Hold on one second. Can you see this incognito screen? Are you guys seeing a black, a black share screen? No. Okay, one second. Okay, now you see it? Okay, so there's there's this hover screen over it. You can't really see it because um, as the administrator, I've actually already gone through the form, um, but actually that's, that's proof that it's working. Once you fill out the form once, you can't fill it out multiple times. Um, the application is a very simple Google form. Um, and it asks very simple questions. Um, three, it asks three very simple questions um, that I can share with you all. Yeah, feel free to go through that and you can fill it out yourself and just flag it as like test or something and we won't include mm -hmm. that obviously. Yeah, we wanted, just like everything else, we wanna make sure that folks can fill out the application on their cell phone because I don't know many 16 year olds that are sitting in front of a desktop. Great. So we're looking forward to seeing this uh, progress. So um, are there, is there a business from community board members that anyone on the board would like to raise? If not, now we have community forum and Allison. I don't know how to say your last name, Allison, if you can unmute and introduce yourself to the group. I know you're interested in education and cultural affairs. Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Alice Noldehoff, and I talked to Betty a little bit about um, potentially joining the committee as a public member, and this is my first meeting, and I'm already learning a lot. I live in Clinton Hill and um, have worked in education and the arts for a while, so I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Great. And, uh, you know, we look forward to, uh, as you continue to come to meetings, you know, hearing your input as, as we discuss matters. Of course, you wouldn't be able to vote, but we're somewhat informal and, you know, participating in the conversation uh, with your uh, interest and experience uh, would be very welcome. Okay, so we did not do the minutes because we did not have a quorum. Uh, is there any other business that anyone wants to discuss? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Who moved that, Dorothea? And is there a second? I'll second it if, oh, oh, Madison, excellent, okay. Madison, okay. 
Thank you so much, uh, everybody. Remember to vote if you haven't already. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you. Good night.